Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And we're back with another Totally Blind Head to Head where we react to the pours and the prices before we find out what we're drinking. If it's an available product, is it worth the money? If it's hard to find, is it worth the hype and the hunt? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to the channel that brings a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. We are not professional whiskey tasters, but what we will do is randomly select one of these pairs to taste totally blind so that you get our completely unbiased opinions. You'll see what we think about the pours before we find out what they are, and then ultimately you'll see us give them what we call a real world score based on the blind tasting, the price and the availability, and whether we would buy them again or not. If you like these blind head to head videos, go ahead and like this video, give it a thumbs up, think about subscribing, do it. Yeah, hit the bell while you're down there. It'll yeah. let you know when we're doing live streams coming up. We do want those once a month. They're a ton of fun. And while you're down there around all those buttons, go ahead and click the arrow to check the video description for our link to our Patreon community. We have a lot of fun over there. That's kind of the interactive element of the channel. And we have four very specific tiers. You can become part of the community. You can get whiskey nerd info, including a access to the spreadsheet that has all these scores mm -hmm. on it. From all of our blind samples. Exactly. We have a bonus content tier that you can get two additional videos that we do every week. We call them uncut videos yep. because they're uncut and <laughs> the bloopers are built in. <laughs> And we also have a Whiskey with Friends tier where we do a private Patreon live stream once a month. And we do quarterly blind flight nights with the community where we send out blind flights to the participants. We all hop on a live stream and we walk through the blind flight together. And if you're wanting any stuff on Whiskey merch, you can uh, check out the description below as well because it's there. We got it now. We got it. We got merch Finally. now. Finally. People have been asking. Sorry, it took so long. It's not our super big forte. We're not here to be salespeople but we did want to create some products that we really like. So yeah. this is actually what I wear a lot. I like wearing dad yeah. hats and I like wearing sweatshirts and we're kind of getting near the end of sweatshirt season, but there's also some t-shirts and some other stuff over there. So check that out in the video description below. All right, let's run our randomizer and see which one of these 18 pairs we're tasting today. Seven. Seven, so nine, eight, seven. We'll get these poured and we will be right back with our first impressions on glass one. Get into our first impressions on glass one. Cheers. All right. Oh, this is nice. It smells classic bourbon. Classic bourbon, but syrupy, brown sugar, maple syrup. I'm getting a little ethanol, but mostly yeah. what you said there's is true. Definitely, there's definitely some ethanol there. It's There's some sharpness in the glass. Yeah. It doesn't smell low proof. I'll say that. Correct. But it smells quite rich, quite syrupy, mm -hmm. dark. I like it. I'm giving no more notes. I want to get into the palette immediately. Let's do it. Oh, wow. I feel like the palette matches what I smell. Like flavorful, balanced. Yeah, it's a big boy. But but by big boy, it doesn't it's not sharp. Like I'm I'm finding it to be very balanced in. There's no sharp edges. It's very rounded, well rounded. Yeah, I'm getting a ton of vanilla, caramel, oak, all those flavors. There's some nuttiness there that's kind of anchoring it down into the deeper side of the equation. Like it's giving me that visual representation in my mind of like a chocolate candy bar with like nuts and caramel and nougat. Like almost like Three Musketeers nougat. Yeah. I'm not getting yeah. the nuttiness. It's but... kind of fluffy on the nose. Mm -hmm. I can't get past the just like chocolate nuttiness All right, man. and the caramel. I'm really enjoying glass one. <laughs> Sorry. I need a moment. This is going to be one of these head to heads where really high proof. off camera, we're going to take our time because the finishes are so long yeah. that we need to give them time to, to do what they're going to do. Let's get into glass two for right now though. Oh man, this smells so good too. It smells good. Yeah. This smells oaky. This smells like a Rick house. It smells a little brighter. Yeah. It still smells like yeah. a Rick house, but like a, like a newer Rick house. Maybe? Well, glass one is more, it has more chocolate and, and nuttiness and oak on it. Whereas glass two to me has more of like a woodiness. Mm -hmm. Yep. I get that. Oh man. Yeah. I can, I can, so good. I will sign off on that hundred oh, percent. Let's Look. get into the palette. I'm so excited about both of these right now. <laughs> and this one also kind of tastes like it smells to me. Lighter. Yeah. Still full of not flavor. As not as dark though, but the flavor. The flavor that's there is lighter, but it's all there. Yeah. 
There's not as much heat and spice. That's accurate. But it, it smells very congruent, or it tastes very congruent with how it smells. Oh, congruent. That's a great word. This you is know vocabulary what? class. You apparently. normally use big fancy words, but today. No, I like it. It's my Hey, turn. respect. <laughs> I, I really appreciate it. Which is so funny because I'm like, I do writing for a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm the one that uses the big words. I found out in my teens that like, if, if I just use big words, people would think I'm smart when I'm actually really not that smart. But it just kind of stuck around. I have. And yeah. and I try to say the most with the least amount of words. Yeah. And I try to say that I end up saying the least with the most amount of words. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know the drill by now. <laughs> Let's get into sip number two on glass two. I don't know how I'm going to pick. Glass two is an oak bomb. It's just, it's hard for me to even dig through it and get anything else other than yeah. oak. So for me, when I think oak, I think kind of sharp and I'm not getting sharpness with glass too. No. I'm getting no. very balanced. It's very neutral. It's very neutral. Yeah. So I, I, I want to disagree with you because I don't like yeah. get the sharp oak, but if you, I get a balanced oak, if that's a thing. When I get oak on a glass really strongly, I tend to think, okay, is it sharp? Is it bitter? Is it sweet? Is it dry? Mm -hmm. Like what kind of, oh, is it musty? What kind of oak am I getting? And this one is sweet. pretty neutral, leaning towards the sweet side mm -hmm. of the equation. These two glasses, to me, both taste fairly high proof. Mm -hmm, they do. And when I say fairly, I mean very. Yeah. And then they almost seem like they're two sides of the same coin. Yeah. If you told me these were from the same distillery, I'd believe you. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not sure that's the case. I mean, this is first impressions. We're going to need to take some time with these glasses. Yeah. We're going to need to clear our palates. We're going to need to start with glass two and then go back to glass one. We're going to do that right now. All right, after spending some time with these pours, what do you think? Let's start with glass one. Where are you at? So I don't know if it's the night, if it's the moon phase, I don't know. But it gets two thumbs up on nose, two thumbs up on flavor. And I mean, I wrote it down, two thumbs up on experience. <laughs> Which has that ever happened? In the history of I our don't blind think, head to I heads? don't think it ever has for you. I don't know. This, whatever. Hang on. Okay. For me, Go ahead. glass one gets two thumbs up on the nose, thumbs up on the flavor, okay. two thumbs up on the experience. Okay. Go ahead with what you're saying. So, this is high proof. I can tell. Yeah. That being said, it is so well balanced that I have to give it, I have to give appreciation to where it's due. Like, it's... Historically, some high proof pours have offended me. And this is very unoffensive, very balanced, very full of flavor. It's a Snickers bar. Mm -hmm. Glass one is a Snickers bar on the nose. We're getting into the candy bar situation. <sighs> these are candy bars is what these are. Okay. So this is a Snickers, typically the king of candy bars. You can at me in the comments if you would like. But to me, Snickers is the king of candy bars. My mom loves candy or however, Snickers, so how, I'll, I'll like However, it. this is not my favorite glass. I'll go ahead and spoil that. This oh. is a different candy bar, which is substandard to Snickers, but it is the better whiskey. With that said, on the on the flavors on glass one, I said it had a, a caramel, a creamy peanut butter, a black cherry, and a sweet oak okay. to it. Okay. That all came across. And then on the finish, I wrote oak with five O's and I counted how many O's. It was just all oak and then there was this cinnamon. Glass one was very good, but we need to move on to glass two. Okay. Glass two, where are you at? So, I'm feeling really generous tonight. Glass two, two thumbs up on the nose. Smell divine. Two thumbs up on flavor. However, I did just give it one thumb up on experience because I was comparing it to glass one. Oh, you're crazy. Okay, go ahead. So, go ahead. sorry. It was a Sorry's good experience. It was a good experience, but I think I might have had a preference to glass one. Glass two for me, two thumbs up on the nose, two thumbs up on the flavor, two thumbs up on the experience. Oh, dang. Okay. So, let's get into it. On the nose, I put brown butter, caramel, vanilla, and I put vanilla in all capitals because it's vanilla. That's the backbone and the foundation of glass two. 
oak, nougat, and then in all caps, I wrote, this is a Rick house. It smells like yeah. a Rick house smells. And then I, what, I don't even know what my notes say here. Oh, I said it had a lumberjack musk to it. Oh, <laughs> I she, love a good lumberjack musk. I'm she, not gonna lie. <laughs> which that note and the fact that I wrote it on paper <laughs> brings up some serious questions. <laughs> But let's move on no. to the flavors. So, Glass two is a Milky Way with a Milky Way Midnight. Shout out to Whiskey Mutant for hashtag pair everything. Milky Way regular and Milky Way Midnight. Okay. Give that a shot. Milky Ways are so good. The dark chocolate might've been a bit of a stretch. Dark chocolate is such oh. an overpowering flavor. I love dark chocolate though so much. It's more milk chocolate in Rick House. I also have no Glass two left. Oh, that's good though. Yeah. That's real good though. It tastes like I just had hot chocolate. Yep. Hot cocoa. Like with real cocoa. With real carco. Real carco. <laughs> real cocoa with marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's daggum good. That's delicious. That is daggum good. All right. On the. Can we try glass one now? Yeah. Let's try glass one. As, as far as glass two goes, I said it had a big burst of flavor. And then the oak that stayed there on the finish was dry and lingering. So it was a little dry. And if you're sensitive to that, I would probably maybe steer yeah. clear of glass too. Although if you like big proof and you like big flavor, don't steer clear of either one of these and bottles. If there's a price disparity, there will be a different, definite winner for me. Mm. But if they're the similar in price, it's gonna be hard for me to oh, pick. Glass one might have more dark chocolate on it. Honestly, that might be the where that bitter sharp notes coming from. That tastes more like the dark, the midnight Milky Way. Mm -hmm. They're both good. I'm not gonna lie, they're both wow. good. So right. for me, it's gonna come down to price. I'm not gonna lie. It's yeah. gonna come down to price. Price, availability. To me, that's the most I important. Want, I want every bottle of this, but I also want all the, as many bottles as I can get to. Let's with, find out the budget what they are. Let's find out. All right, let's find out the price of each of these first and then find out what we've been drinking. So I had a preference towards glass two, slightly. You had a preference towards glass one, slightly? Slightly. Okay, slightly. so glass one is number 72. Oh my goodness. And glass two is number 71. I have chocolate on my phone. How is that possible? We got chocolate everywhere. Those Milky Ways were a terrible idea. Glass number one, number 72 in our key, is how much two. cost? $50. Oh, I'm with that all day long. Yeah. Glass, definitely. Glass number two, number 71. Also $50. You have got to be kidding no, me. No, what are these? Can I can I click? Hold on a minute. These Wait, are, these, what? First of all. Before, How are these both 50 bucks? Before I see what they are, they both taste fairly high proof. I could be wrong because I don't really nerd out on whiskey like you do. My brain is breaking Hold right on, now. hold on. But if they're both $50, I would say we should get like, let's get both of them. Yeah. We need all of these. Yeah. Everything they make. Give because it to me. they're different. I had a preference towards glass one, but glass two was also really good. Like, okay, can I find out what they are? Man alive. Okay. Okay, 71 and 72, right? Yes. Glass number one. Let's just start with glass number one, number 72. It is. Oh. Glass one. So number 72. Yep. Travel exclusive, non-chill filtered, rare breed. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. I don't even know what that is. That's a lot of words. This is non-chill filtered, rare breed. It hasn't been filtered. Regular rare breed is filtered and it is not. Okay, so it's up against. Regular rare breed? Regular rare breed. You're kidding me. Glass two? I'm not kidding you. My favorite? Oh my goodness. Both of these, like, like I said, at $50, <laughs> I'd buy both of these because they're they're different. Like the, the non-chill filtered is darker. Oh, oh my goodness. I Can we like, I, I, oh want, I want to not love Rare Breed so much because I think oh people will goodness. probably feel like we're just Rare breed. I don't know. Like I feel like people think like, oh hey, my gosh, why do on. you guys like rare breed? Time out. You're sponsored. Every time. Like I don't even oh know what goodness. I'm drinking. 
and I feel like I like it so much. <sighs> these are so good. Why? I'm so happy with these. Somebody please tell me why. All right, hang on. We need to get into our consumer metrics. Okay. We're a consumer channel. Let's, Let's get that. into our consumer okay. metrics. Okay. Our real world metrics. Okay. So we have the non-chill filtered travel exclusive rare breed okay. and the regular old rare breed. Okay. The non-chill filtered travel exclusive is only available in airports, certain airports, sometimes. Price is the same. Go ahead and just call the price a wash. How do how do we have it? Like literally right now. Courtesy of Josh Smith sending us a bottle. Oh my god. Shout out shout goodness. out to Josh Smith for sending us this bottle. And thank you. It comes in a liter bottle, so you get more. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and get into our consumer real world metrics okay. for glass one, okay. the non-chill filter travel exclusive rare breed. Where are you at on retail score, price and availability? Okay. So the price is great, but the availability, eh. So I'm giving it just okay. Okay. However. Would you buy it again or not? That being said, if I'm in an airport, and sometimes I do travel for work, if I'm in an airport and I see it, I am for sure 127% buying it again. So two thumbs up for consumer score. I'm going to give the non-show filter travel exclusive rare breed a just okay on retail score. Yeah. I started at thumbs down, but I like it so much and you convinced me. Why can't I, I get it, up, it in the Nashville airport? I moved it up to just okay. So it's just okay on retail score and it's two thumbs up on consumer score as to whether I would buy it again or not. I'm in the same boat with you. I would buy this all day long. Honestly, the lack of availability makes me want to buy it more. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, that's unfortunate. We try to fight the FOMO around here, but sometimes it does get the better of you. Let's move on to glass two. Okay. We are way behind. Where are you at on retail score, oh, price and availability, gosh. 50 bucks readily available in the national market. Thumbs up. Okay. I That's a good score. I mean, it's a good price. It's a good availability. Would I buy it again or not? Two thumbs up. Heck yes, I'm buying it again. Heck to the yeah. Heck to, to the me, yes. It's a two thumbs up on a retail score. And would I buy it again or not? Two thumbs up on consumer score. Because his wife would kill him if he didn't buy it again. Yeah. If you're a keen watcher of the channel, you probably know what I just said. You probably know what that means. But let's go ahead and fast forward to our real world Wait, scores. Meaning, I don't even know what you just said. We are breaking Olympic records here. So we get our real world scores by adding up the thumbs you see on the screen. There are 10 possible points available, but this ain't your regular 10 point scoring system that you'd run across at any Thanksgiving turkey trot. No man, it's a bell curve. We found that most products fall in the middle of that bell curve. That's how bell curves work. Yes. That's why they're called bell curves yes. because most things are in the middle of them. Yes. That's just how it goes. <laughs> so most products, blind tasted fall in the middle of that bell curve. And what we're looking for is the outliers that fall above to recommend or below to not recommend mm -hmm. from that bell curve. Everything else is kind of personal preference. Speaking of things that fall above the bell curve, oh my gosh. let's get into some rare breed talk. Oh my gosh. Last one, the non-chill filter travel exclusive rare breed, real world score, where are you at? Them's are mini points. I really enjoyed that. I am very sad that I cannot get this in my local airport. Yeah. I want to know what airports I can get this in. If you know that your local airport has this, please let me know. Maybe I'll come see you yeah. and I'll get some. Get some. <laughs> We're gonna have to jump through some hoops to get another <laughs> bottle of this. Smelling them on the nose now, they smell identical. No. I'm really struggling right now. That's fake news. Let's let's get into my real world scores on Rare Breed non chill filter. Oh, they do smell identical, actually. It's I gave not it, fake news. I gave it a seven point five, which is a really high score for me. That is a high score. That's for you. really pushing the limits yeah. of my scoring yes, system. Agreed. Which is gonna seem unfathomable, unfathomable, unfathomable compared to what's about to happen. Third time's a charm. Let's get into glass two. Okay. Re regular old rare breed on the shelf for 50 bucks. So. Your real world score. It's an eight out of 10. Half a point less so than the non-chill filtered. So not that much less than the non-chill filtered. It's lighter than the non-chill filtered, I feel like. Um, So the overall experience wasn't as good for me. So that's, that's where it lost a half a point. But overall it's still Pretty freaking good. Okay. 
the regular on the shelf rare breed for me gets a 10 out of 10. It scored a perfect score. This has never happened in the history of our channel. This has, has never it? happened. No. I, am I no. am I being truthful? No, you are being 100 percent truthful. So nothing has and, scored this. High. And we have had this drink before in other head to heads. Man, we just had one in last week's head to head. Literally one week ago, this glass was in another head to head. Checks notes. It came up for me as spoiler alert. A seven out of 10, once you've already seen that. So that just goes to show you. And the reason that I'm making such a big deal about this is because this goes to show you how different, the exact same pour can hit you different ways on different days. And timeout, this ain't even a different day. I was gonna say that. This We're, is an hour, batch, hour and a half later. We batch film, but it's, yeah. it's how different the same pour can hit you differently when compared Man. to something else. Yeah. Like, cause we were comparing the rare breed to an old Forrester product yeah. last time. Yeah. This time we're comparing it to another rare breed product. Honestly, I, in my mind, I would have thought comparing rare breed to 1910 in last week's Thursday video. 1920. 1920. I keep saying 1910 because I hate 1920 and I never want to talk about it. Also, spoiler, spoiler alert. alert, if you haven't <laughs> seen last week's video, it didn't go so well with 1920. Last week, I would have thought the as much as I love Rare Breed, it would have stood out even more in contrast to 1920. But the funkiness that I get in 1920, the negative aspects in 1920, drug Rare Breed down. Yeah. Whereas right now, Rare Breed versus Rare Breed, they really played off of each other yeah. and amped the whole experience up for me. And same. I'm in Happy Land. Honestly, same. Josh is in Happy Land. Same for me. And I'm referring to myself in the third person, which literally never happens, but I'm in Happy Land. That's okay. I do all the time. Because these two pores make me happy. Yeah, and I I think the fact the fact that you said they play off each other is very true. Yeah. Because I an eight point five and an eight is very high for me. Yeah. I don't typically score that yeah. high, and I think because they did play off each other, and I had to compare them against each other, which I liked them both, but I did have a preference to a little bit of the darker, non chill filtered flavors that I got, or the, the darker flavors that I got out of the non-chill filtered. Yeah. So now I like really want to go get some non-chill filtered. It's wild to me that the non-chill filtered was both sweeter, but also a little sharper. Whereas the, the chill filtered version was a little bit more rounded, which makes sense. It's been filtered. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's been rounded off a little bit, but to me that came across, it let the wood and the oak shine, the oak element shine through more. Mm -hmm. And I would have guessed that this was a product that had two to four years more age on it. I think these are for any bourbon lover. Wild Turkey, if, any, you, if you haven't given Rare Breed a chance, you owe it to yourself to give Rare Breed a chance. However, you need to be able to drink a little more higher than like 100 proof. Yeah. They're high proof they have their there's a flavor punch so if yeah. you don't enjoy that you won't enjoy these yeah but if you've dabbled in the 107 something, range or something yeah. like that with like a baker's 107 one oh something. or a weller antique 107 go get a rare breed mm -hmm. it will it could be a game changer for you our love for rare breed is well documented on this channel it and is. it's not changing anytime and soon it's get not used to it. on purpose it's not on purpose it's blind we don't know what we're drinking yeah yeah if you guys They're have so some of this rare breed nonchal filter to the airport like hit me up like i'm not <laughs> kidding you guys iso iso in search of i am not yeah. kidding let me know because i'll make josh go get it <laughs> yeah yeah we'll email us stuff and whiskey at gmail.com yes we need more bottles for of this for real and we're gonna get more bottles of rare breed well absolutely wild turkey jimmy and eddie you guys are the best please watch us please sponsor us <laughs> we are shamelessly pandering that's, at this point that's desperate let's forget he said yeah. that we just love this stuff so much yeah it's good i mean there's not a better value and honestly we call rare breed our yardstick bourbon yeah because it's what we measure the value per quality against every other yeah. pour that being said i understand that not everyone likes rare breed. not everybody does yeah. and i do want to say that taste is subjective yeah. so what we like, you might not like. And if I, uh, some of our pretty regular followers have said that they don't like rare breed as much as we do. Yeah. And that's cool. Like that's yeah, completely fine. It's, it's, it's subjective. It's, yeah. it's, it ain't nothing. Yeah. Like 
listen to why we like it yes. or why we don't like it. Yeah. Which there's not a lot in this specific episode as to why we didn't like either one of these. Yeah, they're both good. But with that said, if you watch any videos of ours, listen to why we like something or don't like something. It's the why. It's the why that matters, not what we ultimately score it. Yeah. So get yourself some rare breed. Give it a shot if you never have before. It's worth it. It's one of our favorites. It's probably our absolute favorite. And if you try it and you hate it, send, our, send it yeah, to us. Yeah, we'll, we we'll, we'll Venmo you. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll dispose of it appropriately. All right. That's it for this week, guys. Till next week. Cheers. Cheers. May I? May and I didn't I, even put an S on Snickers. I see you Why got some chocolate that? there. Did you get a Snickers? That's not for this. Oh, Hang tight. Come on, bro. This is Big Red Gum on the finish. All I know is if you ain't first, you're last. Aaron has been called the Ricky Bobby of YouTube. And I don't think that's an entirely <laughs> inaccurate statement. And honestly, I'll kind of accept it. Glass one is rowdy and glass two is a more classy version of glass one. Glass, I take offense at that because I'm a classy broad. You are a classy broad. But let me tell you, glass one is like, he's like the guy in like the polo and the nice jeans and the nice dress shoes. But glass two is is James Bond in the tux. Mm. He's polished up. Mm. Oh, he's polished up. He's polished up. Let me get into it here. Wait, do we even do our scores? Where are we even at? Give me your scores on glass two. For the tasting discussion. I did. Here. I did. No, no, you did you? Get, oh, you I didn't did. give mine. Okay. We're way off the rails.